Hi, it's Ulysses Carlson here. Today we're going back to the early days of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. We're going back to 2008 for the second movie in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, a film series that now has over 30 movies plus several TV series. What we're looking at today is The Incredible Hulk from 2008, directed by Louis Leterrier. I hope I'm pronouncing that name right. And starring Edward Norton. I'm going to unbox this release and I will share my opinions. Beautiful looking steelbook here. Nice shot of the Hulk on the cover during the film's climax. There's our spine text. That cover's got a nice close-up of the Hulk. Inside we have two discs. We have our Blu-ray copy of the film. And then of course we have our 4K ultra high def disc of the film. Underneath we've got a nice close-up of the Hulk right there. That's very good background art. The Incredible Hulk, of course, follows Dr. Bruce Banner, who, following a failed gamma experiment, finds himself transforming into the Incredible Hulk every time his, his heart rate gets too high and he becomes angry. He's hiding out in Brazil in a bottling plant where he works for menial wages trying to keep his cover. But when his cover's blown and American Special Forces soldiers who worked on the project that he was a part of come to get him, he finds himself on the road again, reuniting with his estranged love, Dr. Betty Ross, and trying to pursue a man who he believes can cure his condition. But Betty's father, General Thaddeus Thunderbolt Ross, is hot on his tail, wanting to weaponize the Hulk technology for his own ends. I think just about everybody in the world knows who the Incredible Hulk is and what his basic story is. He's on the run because he's mutated, and of course, he wants nothing more than to lay low, get himself cured, and go back to having a normal life with the woman he loves. But this is a comic book universe, so of course that's not going to happen. This film follows the Ang Lee Hulk film that came out in 2003. And you get the impression this movie might have been written as a sequel to that initially, but it was eventually retooled and retconned, so it had no tie to the previous film. That earlier film, while I don't hate the film, I think it's a little overlong and philosophical and lacking in the action department. People who want a Hulk movie don't want something philosophical. They want something where the Hulk is angry, smashing stuff, and fighting bad guys. And this 2008 film from Louis Leterrier certainly satisfies in that regard. Of course, later in the MCU, the role of Dr. Bruce Banner, the Incredible Hulk, was recast with Mark Ruffalo. But here we get the one and only performance from Edward Norton playing the character. I actually prefer Edward Norton's take on this character because I think Ruffalo and the MCU sort of toned the character down and made him a little too silly. But here he's an unhinged ball of rage with Dr. Banner trying to stay in control, stay on the run. And the comic relief in this movie, well, there certainly are some funny moments. It never overshadows the movie or pervades absolutely the way it does in a lot of MCU movies. I really do prefer this take on The Incredible Hulk, even though it doesn't really feel like an MCU movie. At times, this sort of feels like the redheaded stepchild of the MCU because... It seems like the frontrunners of the MCU try to pretend this movie doesn't exist, but very gradually shoehorn a few more elements of it into the overall arc of the MCU. And of course, the late William Hurt would later return to play Thaddeus Thunderbolt Ross in the MCU. Sadly, he has since passed away, but that does mean he's going to be recast for the forthcoming Thunderbolts movie with Harrison Ford. And I'm really looking forward to seeing Ford playing that part. There's a great supporting cast in this movie as well, including Liv Tyler, the daughter of famed rock singer Steven Tyler of Aerosmith, portraying Dr. Betty Ross, his estranged love. Tim Blake Nelson playing the eccentric but kind-hearted man who wants to help the Hulk get back to normal. As a secondary antagonist, we get a special forces soldier portrayed by Tim Roth, who is vengeful and wants to stop at nothing to bring the Hulk down. It's not long before he becomes something of a hulking monstrosity himself for the big final bat. The Incredible Hulk always gets bashed and put near the bottom of films in the MCU list. But honestly, I think this is better than a lot of the better-known movies in the MCU. For the simple reason that it's a more serious, gritty film. And it never descends into camp the way some of the later entries do. This was long before Marvel had an agenda. Long before they had an overemphasis on humor. The list goes on, and I really wish we could have gotten more movies in the MCU like this one, because it's a bit of an underrated one, I believe. I am happy to say that The Incredible Hulk looks absolutely beautiful in 4K. This movie gets that nice little extra push when it comes to the HDR, and for scenes that are set at night in dark places, particularly the fight at the end of the movie, that little push works wonders. In 2160p, The Incredible Hulk is a beautiful-looking film, 
and I don't think Marvel fans are going to be disappointed. The Blu-ray disc seems to be identical to the previously released one, and we do get the old bonus features on there from the older DVD Blu-ray era. So there are some nice things to be had on there, and I think fans will want to check those out. Are you a fan of The Incredible Hulk? What do you think of this Louis Leterrier take on the character? Do you think Edward Norton was the best Hulk? If not, who do you think is? Comment down below and let me know what you think. Also, remember to subscribe to this channel for more comics. I'm always posting new videos. And make sure you give this one a like if you found it helpful. I'm TLT Carlson. I'll see you next time.